Welcome to our interactive segment, Engine Behind the Power, in studio. As we promised, we have the Kajado East Member of Parliament, Paris Tobiko. She is the first woman to be elected, first Maasai woman to be elected as a Member of Parliament in Kajado County. And welcome to the show, Thank Paris. You. Thank you. We are really honored to have you. And I must say that your passion, let me begin by asking you, your passion to fight for the rights of your own people. Yes. Were you like this when you were little? Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. um, it, has, it, it has been, I think, part of my life uh, from very, uh, very tender age. I have always wanted to fight for the rights of, of, of the oppressed, the downtrodden. And uh, I thought um, now going into active politics will give me a, the best platform to yes. do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and, and you said from your tender age, yes. maybe what, what motivated you? Are there some things that you saw maybe in your community that you realized that I think when I grow up, yes. then I need to actively fight for the rights of my people? When I was growing up, uh, issues of early marriages and uh, FGM were rampant in my community. And I thought the girl did not have a choice or did not have a voice. And, and, and so I thought uh, I, need, I need to be, to, to be able to represent them. I need to be able to speak for them. And I used to tell people when I was in primary school, um, I will be jailing those uh, old men who, who, who will be removing their girls from school. And so uh, my passion to, 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 to give a voice to the voiceless began from very young, yes. a very tender age. Yes, yes. And, and up until today, yes. we still get to hear cases of FGM early marriages in Kajado County. Mm -hmm. Did you make that decision? Allow me to ask this sensitive question. Mm -hmm. Maybe are you a victim of either of those practices that uh, we see, especially from the Maasai community, or what exactly happened? Are you a victim? And if not, maybe, did you, this means that you had a close relative or people that you could witness going through this and it pained you, or what exactly happened? I, I mean, um, these two particular vices were very rampant in the community. I mean, it was like everybody was practicing it and all parents were uh, allowing or making their children go through it. And um, let me say particularly about early marriage. My father tried to uh, remove me from school very early in my primary school for me to get married to a, a teacher. And um, that began when I was like around 13 years of age. And, 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 and even into secondary school, when I was in Form 3, I was still like supposed to get married. And, and there was a, a lot of intervention from uh, women activists uh, who were very few in the community by then. But they assisted me. And, and so I felt I owed it to the community and also to these women, one, to struggle in my school and, and, and also to now give a voice to, to, to this very noble cause. And so it has been there. It's been a practice. I have, I have faced these challenges. Yeah. And, and most, especially in our African culture, the moment you tend to defy especially your parents, you know, instructions and orders, yes. there is this, you, you're disowned. Yes. What was your relationship with your, especially your father, the moment that these activists came up and helped you and maybe rescued you from that vice? Let me say what assisted me most to get through that particular time was that I was performing well in school. And, and so the women had very good reason to insist that I should remain in school. And, 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 and my father finally uh, bulged and gave in to the pressure from the women and, 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 and allowed me to stay on. And, and actually, uh, my older siblings, sisters, were married off. Uh, and, but there was now a, 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 some uh, cut. After, after, after I, the women lobbied for me to continue in schooling, my father now saw the sense of really allowing me to go on. But after so much struggle, and I, 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 there was 
uh, you know, uh, suitor after suitor who are coming along and tempting my father with uh, dowry, several cows. But now, after my case, my sisters, my younger sisters, my, uh, were given a chance to go through school without a lot of hassle. And, and so I think my father finally got to get some sense that it's important for a girl to go with, on with schooling. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and clearly becoming a pioneer did not just start as a member of parliament, yes. but also back in your home. Yes. So that means you had an opportunity to decide when to have your own family. Yes. When did that happen and how many you know, do you have children? Um, after my university, uh, I, I went to primary school and secondary school and then high school and then joined the University of Nairobi for my first degree and second degree. And... Uh, I think when I was now, after my first degree, my father uh, now realized I was grown up, I could make some decisions, and he allowed me to make this very important decision in my life, to get married to the man that I, I, I loved, and uh, who is my husband today, and we were college mates in the University of Nairobi, doing the same course, we were doing political science together, and uh, we became administrators uh, together, and so my father allowed me to get married to him, who is my husband still today, yes. and um, a mother of four, very, three very beautiful daughters, and a little boy. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And and before we get to your political yes. journey, yeah. maybe the the girls, especially from your backyard, mm -hmm. who did not, or let's even not girls, but people yes. of, of your age, who did not get the opportunity to escape these vices, and they are somewhere discouraged and, and thinking all is lost. What is your message to them? Let me say, uh, like, uh, uh, my age mates in particular, a lot of them, do I say, lost the battle because a lot of them gave in and got married and uh, now are just uh, housewives back at home. They have uh, many children. Uh, but let me say it's not all lost because they can educate their children and a lot of them are educating their children and their children are performing well. I am uh, right now uh, very closely in touch with a lot of them, those who are in my neighborhood. I am assisting them to educate their, their girls and so there is hope, there is hope. There is hope that there is a better tomorrow mm -hmm. for, for, the, for the girls in that community and even for the boys. The, the, uh, the community has come to embrace education right now. Right. Mm. Your decision to get into elective politics, yes. were you not scared? You know, there has never been a woman, at that time, there had never been a woman who had tried, you know, the elective politics. And we are talking about a member of parliament. Yes. Were you not scared? How did you arrive into that? No, I wasn't. I, I wasn't scared. I had a lot of passion. I, uh, as I mentioned, I did political science at the University of Nairobi for my first degree and even for second degree. And uh, by the time I was coming in into uh, active politics, the area member of parliament was General, uh, the late General Gaiseri. And I felt I could challenge him. This was way back in 2007. And I did, I didn't make it, but uh, I was happy with my performance. And I thought I could build on that foundation. So 2013, I was more than determined to, to go for it again. It, it, uh, politics excites me. It, 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 I mean, it was, for me, it was a matter of time. It was a matter of when. But uh, I was going to get into it anyway. And, and when I did, there was no looking back. There was no looking back. Yes. But did you get the support system that any other person would get, especially from your community? Not quite, mm -hmm. not quite. Uh, there, was a, there were a lot of challenges. Uh, there were elders in the community who really felt it's a taboo for a woman to take leadership. It has not been seen before. They were scared. They, they felt like um, I am upsetting the normal system, I mean, cultural systems, uh, the order that, is, that has been there from time immemorial. And so my, my coming in was not extremely welcomed. Um, but I'm happy because the young people really embraced my candidature. 
and, and, and I owe it to them uh, that um, I made it in 2013 after a lot of resistance from the elderly people who even did some cursing ceremony. And I also received a lot of moral support from the church. The pastors prayed for me and prayed for my supporters. And they just gave you know, that courage to my supporters to go on. And I think also, I mean, looking back, um, the cursing ceremony by the, uh, by the Wazes or the elders may have given me a lot of uh, sympathy votes. And so I made it, though very narrowly, in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, today, those old men are my great supporters. They saw, the, I can say, they, they have seen the light. They, they changed. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they saw the kind of work that I have put in in the constituency, the, the kind of involvement that I have done to bring them on the table, that uh, decision making was not an, an, a one person affair, that they were still contributing a lot of their ideas, and, and, and they felt very comfortable thereafter. Uh, in the elections of 2017, they were there campaigning for me. Yes. Yes. And, and let, let me allow me to get you back yes. to the the ceremony yes. because it was all over. Yes. I'll I'll just ask you, like Paris, mm -hmm. were you not scared, especially after the ceremony? Did you feel somehow it it was going to affect the outcome of the election? Or how were you able to overcome that? Did your family continue to support you after the elders had spoken let me say i was mm, i was worried more for my supporters i mean that they would be discouraged i wasn't discouraged i for me i think the drive was there and i felt um, this is just one hurdle i have to go through but i was worried that it will affect a lot of my supporters particularly women who would shy away and would also feel like they cannot go against um, what uh, the elders have said and so I, I must have lost quite a big chunk, a, a, a huge block of my supporters because of that. But I was not discouraged. And as I told you, the, the church became my um, support system. The, the pastors prayed for me and, and were all over saying that God can really use anybody mm. to uh, deliver the society and also to work for community. Right. Yeah. And in 2017, you were re-elected. 2017, I was re-elected with a big margin. Yes. Yeah, so what's the secret? What is this one thing that you did that all of a sudden convinced, especially the elders, yes. to say, I think Paris is the way to go? Well, um, I remained um, respecting them. I gave them the space to guide me on a lot of issues. So it's, finally, it was not like I really uh, did upset their system as, as they had believed that I would. Uh, and, and I also, my performance in terms of uh, delivering services to, to, the, to my constituents was loud and clear. It had been seen by everybody that really, I mean, in, no man has done this much. And, and, and so now I think it was more like um, the service delivery. She has delivered. She's a woman, but she has delivered more than uh, beyond expectation. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and you're talking about service delivery, yeah. the issue of gender equality, mm -hmm. women empowerment. Mm -hmm. should, which is the best way to go about this? Should women be looking at gender equality or service delivery? <laughs> <laughs> This is a very sensitive uh, topic to the women leaders, particularly those of us in parliament, and, and we have been judged harshly. I would say, personally, I would say that women should limit the noise. Women should also uh, limit boardroom meetings. And, and, and we just go to the people. And I know the Kenyan population is very ready to elect women leaders. I know and for sure research has been done that has proved that uh, Kenyan, Kenyans are ready to embrace women leadership. So I think it should be less noise and a lot more of action and we present ourselves to the electorates. We will be elected. We will I, be. I have been elected, others have been elected. We have women governors right now. We have women senators elected. We have more 
constituency holders uh, that have been elected. In my own community, it's, uh, I was one in 2013. We are three. Right now, there's uh, Honorable Nesula Lesuda from Samburu. There is Honorable Sarah Lekorere from Laikipia. And so I'm encouraged that come 2022, there will be more women elected. Come 2022, you've yes. already exhausted your two terms as a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. Where are we seeing Honorable Perry Stobiko? Um, there is no limit in the constitution on, on the terms that a member of parliament can have mm -hmm. or can, uh, can, can run for. And, and so the, the parliamentary uh, uh, race is still very open for me and for others. Yes. But I'm also looking at my own political uh, progression. I am also listening very carefully to the people of Kajiado County. Um, I am also monitoring and evaluating the performance of, of the current uh, county government. And I'm more than willing to take up the challenge. And I think I, I am equal to the task. County governor's race come 2022. Yes, right. it's possible. It's, it's possible. possible. And we wish you all the best. It's Mashiniwa. possible. What's your message to women out here? You've already said that women should reduce the boardroom meetings and approach the people. Yes. But at the same time, there is a lot of, when it, we talk about women leadership, yes. still in, in Africa, not even in Kenya, mm -hmm. it's kind of not working. We are not seeing so many women taking up the leadership position. What is your message to women out here watching you, young women, and even those in school, those at home, just watching you? How, what are the steps? What are the tips that you would give us now that you're saying we should not you know, ask for this gender equality, but we should go out? But generally, what do we need to know as women? Purity, this is what I would say, that um, it's possible. Let me begin from there, that it is possible uh, that you never asked for some special uh, treatment or preference in class. You performed, you competed, and, and, and so is the, elect, uh, the, the uh, elective race. We should compete. Actually, personally, I have never wanted to be considered on the gender card. And I feel like uh, women have overplayed this card. Okay, It is time for us to go for it. Look at the uh, uh, women population in, uh, in terms of um, the, uh, uh, the electorates. We have a higher percentage. So if women were to elect their own, w there would be a woman president. Uh, and, and I'm sure we can convince the men. Society trusts women more. They know women are, are, are less corrupt. They know women are more accountable. They know women are more accommodative. And so uh, as far as I'm concerned, really, um, and I'm, I'm um, sorry that women w may feel this is too harsh, I know there is no, you will not get anything on a silver platter. Also, the, the environment may not be extremely conducive. It may not be a walk in the park. The, there, is, there is violence, there is, uh, it's hard, yes, but I think we are also tough enough. Yes. My thinking. Your thinking. Yeah. I'll give you 30, just 30 seconds yes. because you're coming from a county which they secretly now practice FGM and early marriages. Kindly yes. just look at that camera. Talk to your people who are secretly doing this to their ch young girls. All right. Le let me say um, that in my constituency, a lot of this has been handled and uh, it has reduced, particularly early marriages. That one is almost done. But I would say that undercover, people are still practicing a lot of FGM, and I will tell them that there is no value addition to the girl child. There is no value addition to the woman, to the mother. There is no value addition. And uh, for those listening to me, I would say, let us, let us stop it. Let's just stop it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much, Honorable Paris Thank Tobiko, you. for your time. We highly appreciate that. That's you. all the time Thank we had for the show tonight. Thank you, Paris. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Blessings. And that's it. Many thanks for watching. Fiona Shuri is up next with Business News.